Hello and welcome to Happy Foot, Sad Foot, your LAFC gateway drug and the only LAFC podcast with too much anxiety to properly smoke before our 420 game. I'm Travis Helwig. I'm Vince LaRosa. And I'm Darren Miller. Welcome to our preview of LAFC's MLS match versus Red Bull New York on Saturday, April 20th at 7.30 p.m. at BMO Stadium. You can watch it on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV+. And of course, we'll be live streaming our postgame call-in show 10 minutes after the final whistle at youtube.com slash at happyfootsadfoot. Later in the show, we'll talk to Keaton Cashier of the 42 Originals about where the weed is at. And of course, we'll have our storylines for the week and make some bets. But first, you demanded it once and we're deeply insecure. So now we do it every episode. It's time for listener mandated banter. Two weed jokes, two anxiety jokes, and the show has started. Certainly. Um, so how's it going? Do we, just, do we just keep talking about weed? I think we're yeah, good now. Sure. We're done. <laughs> I haven't smoked no. weed in a long time. It's funny that since it became legalized, I'm sort of like, I'm good. <laughs> It was cool when it was like a thing I shouldn't be doing, yeah. but I never really liked it that much. It's it lost yeah. all its charm. Yeah, like smoking I, has gotten cooler now that, it, now that you're not allowed to do it as much. It, I mean, I, I don't know when this happened. Not that it was ever really any different before that, but like it's just funny to be like this. It just kind of doesn't fit into the context of my life. Like I just. <laughs> Like, when would I do it? (laughs) I'm so happy that all the people are going to listen to this podcast for the weed thing. And we start off being like, I don't really know about this stuff. I mean, I'm I'm extremely pro cannabis conceptually. Whether or not I like it or anybody else likes it doesn't matter. I I think it should be everywhere and legal and nobody should be seeing any obstacles to using it. Vince, you're looking for work. How many different types of drugs have you tried? Yeah, that's a good question. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> enough, uh, enough that if, if someone asked me to pass a drug test right now, and it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> someone else is paying for me. So hire Vince in a few weeks is what yeah. we're saying. Hire yeah. Vince, but in a little bit. Hire Vince, give him notice. Okay. Yeah. Like hashtag what are we te- hire Vince, what hashtag, hashtag, give him notice. What are we testing for? Like, and what's the chart? How many months are we talking here? We what do kind it, of we test? We do in hair. We do in blood. Yeah. We do, we do in yeah, yeah. No, come on. If we're doing piss, I got you, my man. We're good. <laughs> Back in the day when Maradona played for Napoli, Napoli used to hire people to do his tests for him because he was definitely using cocaine. And I'm just going to say that like someone should do the test for me. Like take the bullet for me. Somebody out there we'll in LAFC land. I, some, Darren, you should do it. I mean, like you said, you're, you're a, a parent, so you're not. A parent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be like, ah, oh, sir. Proud parent. Yes. A proud parent. Tested, <laughs> your, your, your wife sir, drug is- tests you, right? Like she... <laughs> De- make definitely sure, make yeah. sure that you're still on the up and up. They'll be like, uh, we have your drug test. It, it, this is not urine. This is beer. <laughs> uh, like, but I swear uh, I peed. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done drugs in years, but my liver is gone. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have an yeah. organ. Well, that's why you have a second one. Um, I'm going to miss livers? the 420 game. I'll be in. Do we have two livers or do we have two kidneys? Or do we two have two kidneys. kidneys? Two kidneys. No, one right. liver, two kidneys. And the, yeah, the liver's like up here. I always think of it as the kidneys, but the liver's like kind of up here, right? It's like above yeah, the yeah. kidneys, more uh, like on your back. Yeah, and up, we got to get a doctor on this show. We definitely. <laughs> we I mean, we've been talking about it forever. The fans have been talking about it forever. Right. Every Hashtag time we post an episode, <laughs> let's every get, time we post uh, an episode, everyone's like, oh, uh, "How long till a doctor's on the show? What, what get, what's uh, taking you guys so long?" We'll get we'll get Conan's doctor from Hot Ones. Oh yeah, well, uh, he was that, great. He, He's good, but he, he's or he's not great, but he is inexpensive, right? God, God bless Conan having his having having some flowers in the young generation, having some flowers, getting his flowers in the new generation. Uh, God bless Conan having some flowers. <laughs> he, it, it was cool to. I mean, Hot Ones was great, but then on Twitter, everyone was just passing around the clips that we've as old men yeah. have known yeah. are incredible forever. It's so funny. Conan has now had two moments while alive that are like he's been like. As if you were at his funeral, just talking about how much everybody <laughs> loves Conan, and that must be really awesome. <laughs> oh, but would he give it all back if Jay Leno had just fucked off? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You know, like we're all saying, like it's got to be good for you, Conan. Conan's like, every night I go home and I still say, "Fuck you, Jay Leno." <laughs> it, I mean, like, just imagine spending your whole life working towards a goal, getting it for seven months, and then the person who like shook your hand and said, good luck, came back and stole it from you. And then so you had to go up. to TBS. So fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But he's doing great stuff that now. Station. He's doing great stuff now. And he's getting his flowers for it, like you said. And any day where you log on to Twitter, like you shouldn't be doing, and you expect it to be the same toxic hellhole, and it's instead a bunch of people talking about how great Conan is, is a great day. 
Yeah. Co- Conan Falconer. Let's make it happen. Oh. Whoa. That's hashtag, cool. He lives hashtag in LA. Conan Falconer. Hashtag yeah, I think he does the. He does the podcast LA. out here in LA, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so, oh, this is a good plug for the end of listener mandated banter. I went, I met Conan once because my wife has a TV show and he was a fan of that TV show and Conan was very nice, but he clearly just wanted to talk to my wife. So I fucked mm-hmm. off and I, <laughs> I, but what I'll say is my wife, season three of my wife's show hacks, which is on now called max, which is very, it was HBO max but it's now called Max, premieres May 2nd. I'm going to talk about it a lot on this podcast. Please yeah. watch it because it makes me able to upfront a lot of costs for this show <laughs> that we then get you to kind of reimburse us slowly over time. But I'm still, you know, it's still coming out of my wife's paycheck. <laughs> but uh, if, you, if go uh, watch Hacks on Max, tweet about it. Third season starts May 2nd. And honestly, they won Emmys for it. It's like the best show on TV. It's great. It's an incredible, incredible show. I I love that show so, so, so much. I'm le- I technically less biased than Travis, but sure, I'm still biased. But I, I, it's such an incredible show. I'm such a huge fan. Every once in a while, she'll listen to like the first 30 seconds of this podcast and then say something that happened and be like, see, I listen. And it's very <laughs> obvious that it came from the first 30 seconds. That's funny. She's like, oh, you'll be live streaming 10 minutes after the final whistle? Oh, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. Travis. And I'll be ah. watching ten, ten to twelve minutes after the final whistle. Darren, start the show. All right. Well, I've always been a casual LAFC fan in that I love the team and never miss a match. But I know there's so much more behind what I'm seeing on the pitch that I haven't digested all week. The lineups, the matchups, the team's form, the tactics, the roster moves, the memes. My God, has anyone seen all the memes leading up to this match? When I'm watching, all I see is ball get kicked, ball go in net. French man flip, you know, like hypothetically. These days I'm seeing a lot of ball get kicked, ball hit crossbar, French man feel shame. But let's be honest. <laughs> New merch. you buy a shirt that says that? I'm close, actually. I'm almost there. I think one more game of it and I might buy a shirt that says that. Look, the truth is I'm more invested in this shit than the term casual suggests. At this point, I'm more business casual. But there's always more to learn and keep up with to stay sharp than I can handle on my own. I've got three young kids and a super important full-time job in digital comedy and an unusually high-maintenance dog. So I don't know when you expect me to do all this research. Luckily, my friend Travis, the human LAFC crazy wall, is all business. He's like Rocky in the training montage from Rocky, only instead of training for the biggest boxing match of his life, he's, I don't know, reading about his favorite soccer team really hard. (laughs) And every week, he catches me up on every storyline beneath the surface of each week's match so we can enjoy it so much more. And then double checks with Vince LaRosa, who already knows this shit, plus what Travis got wrong and what he missed without needing some melodramatic montage in a segment we call Storylines. You know, I've been thinking for a while now that, you know, you saying I do all this hard work hasn't really been true since Vince joined the show because I used (laughs) to have to like do deep dives on teams. And now I just go, Vince, what do we need to know? And Vince tells us, Darren, (laughs) Vince, Dince. I don't know about you guys, but I prefer Celsius to Red Bull. What do you think? Absolutely. I drink it all the time, actually. Not on the Celsius train. There's something about it's too salty. Salty? Salty? What are you drinking? The salt water flavor? I don't know, but I had, look, I've only had like two, okay? But I swear there was something up with, it just, it it, it had a hint of salt to me. So you're calling, you'd call yourself a Red Bull fan? But you think, you think Red Bull tastes good in a void? No, no energy (laughs) drink tastes good. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Well, if you needed an energy drink, what, what would you grab, Vince? I probably would grab like a sugar-free Red Bull. I'm sorry. Do I have to get off the pod now? Oh, yeah. Fuck. For the, I guess for we, the week. Know, wow. we know who you're rooting for. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Fuck, Vince. Fuck. Well, I, there's a certain player on Red Bull that left his wife for... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wait. That was the guy in Red Bull? Yeah, well, he'll be here it? this weekend. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. New first storyline. <laughs> Remind me of this story. I forgot about this guy. What exactly happened? So he got, he got, he signed with the Red Bull, didn't tell his wife, and just yeah. ghosted her, his wife and kids and moved to New York City, right? I, well, I don't know if he completely, I don't know if it got that far, but he, so he, he, Forsberg, Emil Forsberg, 
it has played for he played for Red Bull in Leipzig, so he played for the the German side, and then obviously like eventually was kind of looking for somewhere else to play and joined New York. But I guess from what his wife has posted is like once he went to New York, he basically is like changed his number and was like, we don't exist. You don't <laughs> exist to me anymore. And she was like, I hope you're ha-, like her, her basic like thing was like, I hope you're having friend fun with your New York friends, which was so awesome. But then she was also like, but also he's neglected his children. And then you were like, Ooh, now I feel bad. Yeah. But it's still like, this is, if you want to grow oh. the league, this is what we have to be focusing on people. Like the, I, I, I can't, I can't say enough that NWSL or the WNBA need like a Formula One type documentary because all those players are fucking each other. We got to see the behind the scenes drum. Like why? Like that doesn't happen in men's sports. People would be so invested in women's I bet sports it does it was like a more than they're willing to admit. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> but it's not like they're not open. Like there's like people cheating on yep. each other in those leagues. Yep. And this man leaving his family is the juiciest MLS drama we've had since Bruce Arena did. I don't know. Whatever he did, we, we still, still don't know. know. We'll never know. We still don't know. But look, I, look, we're off the rails already into this episode. And I just want to say, MLS, if you want to grow the league, focus on that man leaving his family. Okay, <laughs> we are. Messi is number one. And then Messi Things is number two. Ooh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. There you go. Messi dot messy things. I there you go, Don Garber. The fact, you that, fucking this is, idiot. The, the, the fact <laughs> that this is not a big enough deal for this man to like really truly be canceled yet is like kind of a problem. If it happened in any other major sports league in America, it would be number one on Sports Center. <laughs> yeah, like even in the NHL, it would be number one on Sports Center. If you're okay, I'm gonna pivot hard pivot to the scripted content now that I got excited. <laughs> If you're listening to this podcast, you know by now that LAFC is off to the worst start in club history, looking confused and feckless in all of our games besides maybe two. Our scoring has dried up, our defense is prone to stupid mistakes, and our midfield feels like they don't know how to play together. And yet, the black and gold are still sixth in the West with 11 points, just four points out of first place where Carson sits at 15. A team I'd like to remind everyone we beat two weeks ago. So while it's true, it might feel like the sky is falling. I just want to remind everyone we are not the San Jose earthquakes, okay? We might just need some tweaking. Which brings us to the first storyline of the match, which is this. Actually, Darren, why don't I just read a text you wrote? King of the Casuals, Darren Miller, texted me this week with a very uncasual text that said, quote, Good storyline for next week is that at to Esta yellow card accumulation gives us a chance to experiment like we were talking on the post game show without having to carry the weight of some kind of player judgment. Darren, I just want to say, <laughs> Don't this, is me, like, Travis. this is like watching your son leave for college. You know, I gave, <laughs> I gave you so much and then there you go off into the world without me. And I wonder, do you even need me at all anymore, Darren? <laughs> Because I oh, didn't I know Atuesta had yellow card accumulation oh until, my God. You sent that, until you sent that text. So I want to ask you, the quote unquote king of the casuals, <laughs> what sort of lineup do you want to see this Saturday, Darren? Fuck. Well, first of all, <laughs> you of all people know that I've never been casual over text. So that is not <laughs> something I'll ever claim to be. <laughs> um, uh, I'm a lot. When we get into text, uh, <laughs> what we called you the J Cole of LAFC last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can't win. I can't catch a break. Honestly. <laughs> also, I got, I kind of got into it a little bit with, I would say some really very friendly and respectful debate in the page and the Patreon comments about the very, like, I don't know what you're about to say. What are you talking about? Are you fighting with people in our Patreon? <laughs> No, no, no. On the live stream, I was like, well, why don't we just bench Bolonga? <laughs> so, oh. so on the Patreon, there honestly one person less than I expected was like, well, that's a terrible idea. Why do you guys talk about that? <laughs> uh, oh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah that is a bad um, idea. Darren, but then we had a good li- conversation. What lineup? Do, you're being Darren right now. What lineup do you want to see? <laughs> My point is I'm not in any way an authority to have any idea what the fuck the answer to this question is, I would I would like to see Martinez. I would like to see Kamara. Between the two of them, I think you've got a full match. I think, but that's but, 
That but you would I, need to lose two players from the yeah. starting lineup then, not just add to us. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I feel like maybe you use that to us as accumulation as a kind of like, well, I guess we're going to have to move some stuff around now and you can move around more than just that thing. Right. So, you know, maybe Bogush has to step back a little bit and that opens up something in the front. I don't know. I, I, I To be honest with you, I don't really have like something I want other than to see the experimentation. I say I, I I feel like I'm on the same page. Vince, what do you think is most likely the starting lineup this weekend without Tuesta out of the game? We talked about this a little bit on the post game, and I said like maybe if you're gonna experiment, it might be smart to do it like on a per game basis because you have different players that bring different profiles. And actually against Red Bull, I think you maybe want Ilya more than Atuesta because you're talking about a team that likes to play in transition, likes to press. So maybe you want an Ilya who can kind of break up those transition moments more so than Atuesta. So I think you see Ilya, I think Darren's right. Bogush probably gets to be moved back because the combination of him and Tillman being able to dribble out of pressure is going to be very helpful, I think, in this game. Kai Kamara, does he have 90 minutes in him? I don't know, but Thomas Angel did play in the LFC 2 game on Sunday, and I think he got close Mm. to 70 minutes. So at least you know like he can give you, let's say, 30 minutes. My only concern, and I know everybody really wants to see him, and Darren, you brought it up, Martinez. I don't know what message it sends to a player that you can get red carded for something really stupid, and I will give you your first start ever. Like, if he scores that goal, doesn't get red carded, then you can get your first start maybe. But even then, I would say it's we're still stretching it just because he scored a goal. He did it you know, as a great individual play, and he's a great individual player, but that's not what we want in 90 minutes of a game, right? So I just, I, I, I bluff a little bit of Martinez. And then also, of course, you know, I'm an Oliver apologist. I think he does a lot more off the ball. That's, that's very important. But that would be my biggest take on Martinez. It's just like, what, what are you saying to him and everyone else is like, it's okay. And I'm not saying that he, that means he needs to be banished, but yeah, he has to come back off the bench and show that he can come off the bench and do good things without the bad things. I will only say that he's one of the few players we've seen this year that, has a sort of like fire and drive that like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it then, I guess. Sure. Like there's been a real listlessness listlessness with a lot of the players that I, when he comes on the field, you don't feel that. I mean, he makes mistakes, but they're passionate mistakes. The other thing I want to say is like, if we're going to do some experimentation, I think this is what you're getting at, Darren. Maybe we try a bunch of new things. Like maybe that's dumb, yeah. but like, you know, Chano, we've had some backline mistakes. Vince, if we brought in Chano to start, is he more of a long replacement or a Mario replacement in your mind? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, I think, look, long and, the reason why Long and Mario don't seem to work out is because they are very similar. So I think he's an either or because Max, Chano plays a lot more like Giorgio. Like we said, he's relentless. He'll go hard into a tackle, but he's pretty good on the ball. So I, I think after the mistakes that maybe he had in the last game, maybe Murray just needs a, a quick seat. He's also been a little more injury prone over the course of his career with like a little soft tissue injury. So why not bring in Chano? And then also look, Chano played for NYCFC for years. If anyone knows, knows about Bull. how to play a Red Bull team, Smart. he does. And I don't yeah. think you even need to tell him. You can just put him in there and go like, you know what you're doing. Please just help help us pass out of the back a little bit more than we than we're able to in normal games. Darren, since you're so fucking smart now, any guesses what storyline number two will be? Uh, yes, I've been in New York. I lived there for five years. Nope, nope, that's the end. Oh. So that brings us to our second storyline. That's not in, in here at all, is it? It's at BMO. <laughs> that brings us to our second storyline in the match, which is this. Will Buongo rise again or will he sink deeper into the depths of self-doubt? I said this just yesterday to Luke on LGBTQFC. Uh, a podcast that I don't think has come out yet, but happy for you all to hear. You should go subscribe to his podcast, LAFC Luke, if you don't. But I said that Denny Bawanga has been a little less attractive lately. And not because <laughs> his abs have sagged or his chin has softened, but because the aura of confidence has disappeared from behind his eyes. He's frustrated and angry and clearly doesn't understand what happened to his automatic goal scoring from last season. He has missed two open nets, like a half dozen easy shots, and has hit the post more times than Post Malone's abusive father. Yes. <laughs> For the record, that's a thinker. Have, that's a thinker. 
<laughs> have no idea if Post Malone has an abusive father. Just needed a joke. Oh, there. I thought that was real. <laughs> no, I don't know. Get it, get it, I don't know anything about Post Malone. I like him. Getting the yips is famously a difficult thing to get over without just forgetting you have them. And it seems fairly clear to me that Denny Bowanga is in his head. Vince, outside of the mental component, have you noticed anything different with Bowanga's game or how we've been playing around him this season? Or is it just purely he doesn't have the confidence at the moment? I think it starts with confidence and then the next step for him. And this is something that he's never had to deal with before because last year, literally almost everything he touched went into the back of the net. I'm watching him this year and I'm just wondering when he shoots sometimes, I'm like, maybe that's not the right time to shoot. And he's just taking some shots from from bad areas. It's like we said in the post game, Oliveira and Boanga have the most shots on target of any MLS player and it doesn't feel like it because the goals haven't come. But like they do. And so it makes you wonder like, well, what's happening here? It's not like they've all of a sudden become horrible players. It's it's their shot choice. And maybe some of that has to do with confidence, but I just think he's never been one that's been shy to, to shy away from shooting. And he's probably the best example of somebody that thinks he can shoot his way out of it. But I, I don't think that that maybe is necessarily the case. Maybe it's time to start understanding how you can play off your teammates and get yourself to even to even better spots Although if you miss the ones like you did again, you miss the one like you did against the galaxy. I can't help you, but he's gotten into some pretty good spots every yeah. now and again. <laughs> but I mean, other than that aside, like he, he is taking shots from just about anywhere. And you'll say like, Oh wow. You ripped that one off the post. But like what, that was probably the best case scenario, right? Like when you have yeah. an awkward angle. So I just think he needs to start, he needs to understand he's got to try to work into better areas. And that's going to, that's part of the confidence and part of the focus. There were some goals last year that he scored that were like at these insane tiny angles. And looking back, it's like, how much of that was luck? Like there, these yep. angles are like crazy. Maybe he just was on an insane streak of luck. But, I, you know, I, I believe in him. I think he'll be back. But uh, yeah, it's been rough to watch game to game as it just keeps becoming more true. Darren, I feel like you're one of those weird old men who knows a lot about old timey baseball. Without mentioning the city of Boston, what can you tell us about the Yips? Oh, I don't know how to do that without mentioning Boston. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what do I know about the Yips, like in general? Yeah, I don't know. Isn't it a baseball thing? Is it? It's just like an all sports thing, isn't it? No, I think it started in baseball. It's like a I think it game. originates in baseball. Uh, well, I guess, guess you're you not say, an old timey baseball man. Well, no, I guess you would say in baseball, no, but I like, pitchers I like baseball. who have the Yips, they they maybe their careers suddenly, usually end. like yeah, they kind of just <laughs> like stunk. can't find the strike zone anymore, <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's not unusual for a pitcher to stop being able to find the strike zone in like a game or like over the stretch of a slump of some kind over a few weeks. But then like it does sometimes happen that they just never get it back. Well, There's... thank you for not mentioning the city of Boston. I know that's really difficult. Almost as difficult. One as great it is... example of a pitcher. That... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know that's really difficult, almost as difficult as it is for the people of Boston to not mention any racial slurs. And that oh, brings boy. us to the final storyline of the match, which is this we, we can... <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the final storyline of the match, which is probably the most important storyline of the match, which is this. Are the Red Bulls the best team in Major League Soccer? Now, I know you've all heard of this guy named Leo Messi. He plays down in Miami, but out in New Jersey, the Red Bulls have quietly been dominating the league. And by quietly, I mean it's all MLS media wants to talk about because they like to pretend the Western Conference doesn't exist. In eight matches played, the Red Bull have 15 points with four wins, three draws, and one loss. They are tied in points with Miami, but have one game in hand on them. They are ranked number one in ESPN's power rankings this week, number two in MLS's power rankings this week, and third in Goal.com power rankings website this week, which I promise is a website. Also, right before I came on, saw they were number one on Eli, Eli Lesser's power rankings this week. So shout out to Eli Lesser for proving my point. When was the last time... I told you guys he does this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Travis does with his time. This is well, why looking, we're here. Looking up all the different power rankings. I was thinking about goal.com and I was like, when was the last time I typed like www.goal.com into it? Like I would just like yeah. search the name of the website in the browser and then it'll pop up on Google, right? I haven't typed a URL in forever. Have you? Fair. <laughs> So you, so you feel like now, like it probably at one time it was amazing for them to be goal.com. And now you're saying it's, it's a bad thing. Cause when you type right. in goal, you get copious. You're probably not getting goal.com. Yeah. Probably yeah. not. Yeah. Wow. Or maybe you are Travis. Cause you're a frequenter of 
the gold.com. Gold. It's my yeah. homepage. When I open uh, Chrome, <laughs> it pops up. Do people gold. still gold. have those? That's yeah. a yeah. Do you have a Is that a thing so? Yeah, I still, I just, it goes to the blank Google page when I open my browser. <laughs> Somebody asked me if I was playing this new New York Times game, and I, lo- and I was like, it's not in my app. And they were like, oh, it's only on the browser. I'm like, you think I'm going to the New York Times games on my browser? I haven't played a game on a laptop in a decade. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> um, and people Look, have desk jobs, Travis. Uh, use your fo- you use your phone at your desk. Dante Van Zier <laughs> is hard pivot from yelling about New York Times games to Dante Van Zier is the 25 year old Belgian de- designated player who Darren successfully identified as a player last week and not a Pokemon, and he currently leads the league right. in assists with only six games played out of eight, which is wild. He most of those assists were to Scottish striker Lewis Morgan who leads the Red Bull with six goals. Vince, why is this Red Bull team so scary? This is the part where I said I used to do the research and now I outsource it to you. Why is this Red Bull team so scary and how do we match up against them style-wise? They are scary. Well, I'm curious to see how good the Red Bull really are. I know we're eight games in and normally we would say like it, you kind of are what you your record is, but Red Bull always play, will always play a Red Bull style, which is a highly physical active style and to do that like you just know when you're on a red bull team you're gonna have to come in in a certain shape and so there's some some of it has to be early season like these guys are already in better shape and some teams are playing into their shape but i do think that they've gotten much better in in the quality of players they have you you named vinzier uh, you named lewis morgan who who can score goals and has been a great comeback player after a long injury Obviously, we talked a little bit about Forsberg's personal life, but he is a very good player. And I think that's what's changed for them is like they've always had these kind of guys like the Van Ziers and Morgans who you're like, yeah, nice player. They can do some things in MLS, but Forsberg is a legit Champions League quality player. And so they added that little bit extra to their what lineup position to does go Forsberg with. play? He's an attacking midfielder, but he still, as we've said, he came from Red Bull Leipzig. So he is fully breaded in the system. It doesn't have to like get up to speed. He knows it probably better than some of those guys even on his team because he's been doing it in Europe. And I think that's what that's what's made them better. And regardless, but, but, even but, it, so he's he plays in position, but when he leaves position, do you think he usually comes back home, or does he just sort of wander, leaves and leaves home permanently? Oh, I see. I see, I see where you're going here. He's definitely yeah. He he's all over the place. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. It just sort of leaves him leaves him wide open in the home middle, is right? just. Yeah, let's just say home is just a suggestion to him. Yeah. You know, there's no, like, especially when you, you know, contracts don't work the same in Europe as mm-hmm. they do in America. Yeah, and so, marriages, you know, they might, yeah, contracts, they, yeah, they might not be as binding. But no, I mean, he's... Yeah. Can he's you get good, married in multiple countries? Probably, right? Why not? Sure. Well, if you get married, like, let's say if you have a destination wedding, like in Mexico, don't you have to then get married in the United States? They yeah, don't recognize it. That's so interesting. I'm going to get a wife in every country. Yeah, so maybe great. someone maybe someone told him that they're like, hey, you know, if for your wife to be recognized here, you're gonna have to do. And he's like, am I? Because <laughs> there's not like an international marriage body. Okay, keep going. <laughs> there should be <laughs> the Interpol of marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that that's it. Like they they have they know their style. It's hard to play. It, like regardless of whether like they're really good, they're always gonna be hard to play against because they play a physical style and they all know kind of what they have to do. And they you you have to be on your game physically and you have to just kind of know that like you're the space and time that you normally have maybe against other teams you're not going to have anywhere on the field they'll press everywhere on the field and so that's that's probably the biggest thing that lafc is going to have to do is like if you're going to play through the press you're going to have to be super clean and if you're going to play over it you got to get your team ready to get on that second ball because they're ready to win second balls every single in every single part of the field darren have you ever been to just outside new york (laughs) (laughs) I have. Harrison, I've, been, I've been to just outside New York frequently. Uh, any any recommendations for any traveling support? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've got extra time, find a way to get to New York. Uh, <laughs> not far, but it's not close. Uh, well, I feel like we covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long storyline segment where I feel like we talked about soccer for five minutes. Those are the storylines for this week's match. When we come back, we're going to talk to the 42 originals about what it's like being a cannabis supporters group. And we're back. Well, this Sunday is 420 at BMO. And if you've been to a match there, you know that there's a supporter group that brings a little bit of 420 to every match there. That's the 42 originals. And what better time than this week to talk to Keaton Cashier of the 42 Originals about the intersection of LAFC culture, cannabis culture, 
and tax season. Just kidding. Keep me <laughs> cashier. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. We're excited to do it. Well, for someone who so far their only understanding of the 42 originals is like, who are those guys in the North End who are also interested in another thing that isn't LAFC? <laughs> like, what is the 42 originals? How did it start? How did you come into it yourself as a fan? Well, I've always been a fan of the game. Uh, I love I love football. I actually call it football. I'm a huge United supporter. I haven't missed a match in like going, I think going on 17 seasons now. So like football, I okay. grew up playing the game. I love it. So a lot of my friends do too. So when LAFC came around, we got the chance to be a part of actual supporter culture. And that's something I've always wanted to do, especially being a European supporter of football, you know, and their supporter cultures are. So you see that and you're just like, dang, you know, I wish LA had, or the United States had that period, which is great to see it growing around the league. But yeah, you know, being back in the day when you know going to that Galaxy games and you know the Chivas USA games and whatever games we could get, we just didn't have that same atmosphere, right? So when we got to go to LFC games, it was like, all right, this is this is what we're looking for, you know, like as supporters and like people that love the game and want like proper representation for people that grew up playing the game and know how, you know, how I feel about the game and how it should be represented on the world stage for the thirty two fifty two to do what they do. They've been doing since the beginning. And I'm talking about before we had a stadium. These are the times when we were showing up and it was just like meeting up at a brewery and we were just seeing the chants and you know those stuff and just seeing the supporter groups growing and we we're like all right cool like we want to be we want to be a part of this so we went all in we got our supporter tickets there was like four or five maybe six of us at the very beginning you know there's a bunch of groups so we were trying to find one to fit in but at the end of the day it wasn't not that there was one that didn't fit us it was just that Pat, for me, the opportunity when we were, when they were all making them, I just asked him, like, how do you start one? And he said, basically, you just have to have, you know, whatever the criteria was, but it's just got to be something that you're passionate about and you'll have, you think other people will be passionate about too. And for me and my friends, you know, who play soccer and smoke, you know, cannabis, it's for us, it's a universal language. You can go anywhere in the world and it's for us that, you know, have passports and travel. I don't speak very many, very, very many languages, but I go around the world and I do smoke with people all over the place. And I feel welcome and I do play soccer everywhere I can't go. So just growing up and doing that, I've always felt like those two things were huge as, like I said, a universal language to bring people together. So we got a chance to make something like a supporter group about that. We're like, all right, cool. Like, this is what we're going to do. And at that time, you know, everybody was called originals anyway. So it was just like, all right, well, there's the O for the 4-2, you know, like we're not even going to be 420, it's just 42. And then we're just, we're originals because that's what we were. That's what they called us. So. That's where it all started, and that's how it came about. And we've been around since then. If you've never joined a supporter group, or if you're interested in that, like, what is that process like? Well, that's a lot of our members. You know, a lot of people that we bring into the to the community for LAFC, they're not coming from a soccer background, so they don't know anything about being a, a supporter. So we do have to teach them that. And for me, it's just about showing how much you love the game. You know, like, the players put in a lot of work to, you know, be professionals, but... For us, the people that get to show it on the world stage, like you only get to see that passion every once in a while, like during the World Cup and like Champions League finals, or unless you're watching European football. But for us to be able to to show that week in and week out on a TV, like especially on away games, you see how we travel, that shows what passion is. And once you come around, you'll kind of start picking up. It's not like there's any certain things to that you have to do to be a supporter. It's just how what do you want to do to show that you want to be involved and that you care. There's different things like you can show up and paint TIFOs. You can just show up and help out at tailgates. You can go to away matches. You cheer. If you don't know the words, you at least clap your hands. You wave your scarf. If you're active in the North End. You're not just sitting around, you know, watching, watching the game. That is different from someone that just wants to go watch a game. You know, if you want to watch a game, there's 18,000 seats in the bank, I think, you know. But there's 32,000 of them that are people that want to not just watch the game. We want to do more than that. We want to cheer. We want to stand. If there's a flag blocking our view, all right, I'm not really worried about not seeing the game today. I'll watch it on the replay. But You're I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. You know, and I'm, I'm part of I'm giving to the atmosphere. And that's really what it is. However you feel like you can add to the, at, the atmosphere, then that's where you fit in. And that's the beauty of being an LFC supporter because you see it across, all, across the board, right, and how many different supporter groups and different people that we have that feel comfortable to be who they are and still come together for this one thing, right? And that's where you'll f you'll figure all that out once you show up. So for those of you that have never been, I would say just come to a tailgate. You don't even have to have a ticket. Just come to a tailgate, you'll find a ticket. Probably give it to you for free because people there are so nice 
And then from there, you'll be hooked. And that's how it goes. That's good. I mean, I imagine it, there's a lot of LA sports fans maybe who go to an LAFC game for the first time and they don't sit in the support in the supporter section, but then they see what it is and they're like, "Oh, I want to do that." Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be here. So, uh, what about the, like the formalities of it? Is there like do you pay dues? You sign up? You like are there stuff outside of the matches that you're like doing every week? To be in the, the thirty two fifty two specifically, yeah, there's a registration process. You just sign up. There's a link online. I think it's like thirty five bucks, and that money just goes to like tifos and like whatever we have to pay for. Like you know, if you've ever come to a game, you see that big old thing that we've raised, but like behind the goal before the game, those things cost a lot of money. You know, the paint to do those, that's a lot. And that's what the donations go towards. Anything that we're going to do. There's also charity events and all different types of things that come with being a supporter that you wouldn't necessarily get with just if you just came just to watch matches because you wouldn't know that this stuff's going on behind the scenes. It, it is a, a year long thing. You know, there's, you know, like I said, charity events or beach cleanups, all different types of fun things that go on. There's running clubs. There's all different types of things that happen behind the scenes with being a supporter because it's about being part of a community and building a family and all different types of things come with that. So it's not like it's a secret club. Anybody's welcome to join. You don't have to be a part of a, a supporter group to join at 3252. You could be a register. You just want to donate. You know, you can just donate and that money goes to us and helps. And then if you need a ticket to the North End, guess what? Somebody will help you out. You're a registered member of 3252. It also helps you get tickets for away games. If you're trying to ever do something like that and you're wondering, well, how do I sit with them when I go to somewhere like Atlanta or I go to somewhere like Colorado? Well, it helps to be a part of the 3252 because not only are you getting the tickets, you're getting the group chats that are going on. So now you know like where to go on the nights, you mm -hmm. know, so now it's better. So if you go out on a four day trip, all right, cool. Everyone, there's, a, there's people are going to be there a week long before, you know, so there's always stuff going on and that type of stuff is what comes with being a supporter. So I recommend everybody, if you get a chance to meet somebody, if it's not me, um, anybody out there on the grass, talk to them about it. They'll welcome you with open arms and bring you in. So how many away games do you end up going to in a, in a season usually? Well, I, I try to go to at least one. I've gone to at least one every season. Last season was my most. I think I went to nine. But if I'm not going, we have somebody in the group there. Last season, we had somebody at every match of the season, which was amazing. Somebody from the oh, group. Oh, wow. Yeah, every match. And that was pretty awesome. So to be able to have representation like that is, from where we started, is, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. So it's 420 this week. Well, are, do you have, like, anything special planned for BMO? I'm not going to give away too much of the secrets, but it's going to be fun. Our tent will have some things going on. If you do come to the tailgate, come stop by. We will have food for you guys. Uh, we'll have ceviche, different options, vegan, fish, and shrimp for anybody that wants to indulge in some ceviche on Saturday. We'll have games and some giveaways and other stuff like that. But as far as like what's going to happen at the match, you're going to have to be there to to see or watch it on tv i can't give those type of secrets away that sounds good to me. it'll be fun though you know we don't have a 4 420 match too often so it's yeah, great to see I, that has that happened before yeah have we you, had one you? yeah we had one it was a, a u.s open cut match we played against orange county if i'm not mistaken yeah it wasn't not many people showed up but we did i think we had over 100 people in the crowd that day in the north end so Oh, that was wow. awesome. That was like one of our first times we had that many people show up, but now we're averaging way more than that. Do you run up against like rules and restrictions that make things a little harder for you guys than other supporter groups? Like, does no. BMO have their own set of rules for cannabis and things like that? Well, I mean, obviously you're not allowed to indulge in the stadium, okay. so that's that's not something that that we do. And if you think that's what we're doing, I would like to let you know straight from the horse's mouth that that's not happening. That smoke but is something. Yeah, else. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's not us, <laughs> but. Outside the stadium, we do have whatever, but we act like, I mean, we don't act, we are a supportive group. So we follow the same regulations like everybody else does. We try to act just as, as anybody else would and follow the same guidelines, the same rules and be just as active. But uh, as far as like what the club, the club allows us to be who we are. Um, and that's what I love about them. You know, they're not stopping us from raising our flags. They're not telling us not to make our banners. Um, they allow us to bring our flags on away days. You know, you have to submit your flags before you bring them to away days. You can't just show up and just bust out a flag at the match. You have to submit them to the people, you know, that are in charge of whoever's going to be watching us or whatever. And they bring, they show them to the other clubs. And so far, we've never once been told that we cannot bring a flag. And I love the club for that. Wow. Um, you saw, I don't know if you guys, you know, anybody that followed the, the club closely, you saw on Instagram, like, I think last week, they posted a picture with, one of the celebrities down by the pitch holding our scarf up. 
you know, and that was right there on the club page. And that's a four, that literally says 42 originals on it, you know? So if they had a problem with, you know, anything, I don't think that's, that's one thing you wouldn't yeah. see happening on there. So shout out to all the people behind the scenes, especially the owners at the club for allowing us to be who we are and not putting restrictions on us like that. But we do hold, we try to be as responsible as possible. The goal is to change, not to change the, necessarily like the consumption part of it, but we would like to see some type of representation as maybe like brands around the stadium, allowing some type of advertisement so they can get, the cannabis companies can get some type of revenue back. There's a lot of alcohol advertisements all over the stadium, so I don't see why we can't do the same, or at least start having those conversations. Start with CBD. I know there's CBD advertisements at Angel City matches, so we're just trying to get those type of barriers docked down. So when you do go to a game, if you ever go to a, a Laker game or something, nobody anywhere, you can go, no professional sports where you see any type of cannabis advertisement. But since you're talking about tax season, you want to go look at how much these states are making off of tax dollars from these companies. And for them not to be able to advertise, you know, I'm not saying let them sell in the stadium, but to at least have a billboard or some type of like here, this is at least where our, our, you know, our dispensary is located type of thing. Like, I don't see why that shouldn't be allowed. And the closest thing they can do is buy a billboard outside the stadium, which is going to cost them an arm and a leg. And they're competing against, you know, called Jacob and stuff like that. No disrespect to him, but that's just the type of things that are going on. So there's no type of representation in type of advertisement spaces or anything for them to to get into the game. So that's just kind of like what we're trying to get going. Got to get called Jacob to represent them and make it happen. <laughs> yeah, if we can make that happen, that'd be awesome. So Darren has asked okay. you like the, the formality questions. We've gotten you, you know, like all- <laughs> Yeah, we haven't gotten fun yet. <laughs> ones. Can I, I can I throw in a fun one? I, yeah, I those are the sad you, put questions. We got fun ones coming up too. <laughs> yeah, these are happy foot yeah, questions. Yeah. <laughs> these are the happy foot questions now. These these are the gateway drug questions now. Let me let's let's do let's do a fun one. Like let's just say let's do a historical because you're a football guy, like you said, through and through you're a Manchester United fan. Let's do like a historic smoke session. So like give me like who would be your three soccer players? And you don't have to say that like maybe you don't even know if they ever indulged, but like who would be the three guys? That like you you're like I'm putting this together. These are my guys. Not just because I want to smoke with them, because like it's. I already know the out. answer. Yeah. Yeah, you're Ron, gonna hang out. So who Ronaldinho, are Ronaldinho, number one. That's that's my guy, dude. I love him. Free spirit. Um, Pele, number two, and then the third one would be tough because I only get one more person to throw in there. Man, just because I would love to hang out with them and see how he was high. I would say it's Latan. <laughs> you know that's just, a good one you know that's who i would throw at because i know that the other two we would just be cracking jokes with him and he'd probably try to be serious and try to be his, his himself but no nah, it's gonna take over and he's gonna end up laughing with us so i think that right. would be great yeah and then go play For one of those jo jogo bonita matches like that would be sure. awesome <laughs> oh yeah like in the cage but for yeah. a hot second there, it, it would be terrifying when Zlatan, like, dead looks at you and he's like, you're smoking with a god right now. And you're like, yo. <laughs> right? Oh, man, dude. And he's like, hey, pass that. Here you go, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, th those would be my three for sure. That's a great question. I've actually never been asked that before. Do you have any, like, I want, like, recommendations from an expert. Like, best pregame strain. Like, what? Like if you want to enjoy either watching or playing soccer, like, what's the best way to do it with cannabis well for me i've been doing it for so long i just like to have just like any type it doesn't matter as long as i have any type of cannabis i'm cool as long as watching or playing for other people i would say like from you know just from what i actually do know about it from a not recreational standpoint um yeah every everybody's got different cannabinoid systems so different strains work for different people in different ways so we could sit here and all smoke the same thing and it would have different effect on all three of us you know it might make you sleepy, it might make me happy, it might make him laughy, but it's all the same thing. So I would say go out there and try whichever one you like. Edibles do take a little bit longer to kick in, but they do hit a little bit harder too. So I wouldn't recommend taking edibles before a match because you might be sleepy by halftime. So maybe take a vape pen with you, something like that for the tailgate. And for playing soccer, doesn't really matter however you want to do because it just makes you more creative for me Wait, honestly I, I run like i run like a uh like an animal out there and i'm never tired so and i'm always smoking so this right all, before this always gets to me like look i i love to to smoke but i can't i can't before i play a game my, my best friend since <laughs> high school and he knows who he, like i'm not even outing him his name is chris he's probably listening to this episode and he, as he swears by it that he is a better soccer player 
when he smokes and he's absolutely not. It is not true because like, his, <laughs> his, he, he may be more creative, but his synapses are not firing the same. So, that's true. That's true. So I, I will, look, you, you do what you got to do. It's a, it's a give a and take though. It's a give and take, yeah, you know, like exactly. especially when you get it, older it, in the game. So like for me, like I, I slowed down playing. I'm not trying to run at a full speed. So I can, it works for right. me now. It gives me the courage to do something I wouldn't normally try to do. And if it doesn't go right, then all right, cool. I'll just get back on defense and not be as mad about it. If you, you're doing it, you're doing it, right? Like, and that's what I always tell him. I'm like, dude, it doesn't matter. Just don't, don't try to lie to me and pretend like you're better all of a sudden. But my question to you is, what position group do you think should be maybe just a little bit high before the game? The strikers. Definitely the strikers because they don't have creative. Yeah, they have to, they just have to be creative and have the courage to just take a shot from wherever, you know, like you want to feel like you want to hit a banger from 40 yards out. You got the angle, you know, you can do it, do it, you know, rip it. And if it doesn't go in, it goes over the crossbar or something. You're just going to be like, all right, let's get back. And it doesn't really hurt the team. I would never say the keeper should do it. You know, we do have our own, uh, <laughs> oh, man. we have our own 42 recreational team that we sponsor as the supporter group. And, they all, most of them do smoke before games. And sometimes we do let some, some really dumb, I call it chasing colors. <laughs> you know, we look like we're chasing, chasing colors out there sometimes, but it's fun. You know, is a, is a PK easier or harder for when you're, when you're high, when you're high. Well, yeah. for me, it's easier. Everything's easier yeah. when I'm high. It's less stressful. I'm just going to go up there and hit it. I'm not going to think too much about it. I think if I wasn't high, I would probably, and I guess it depends. Like, if you're not used to taking them, you're going to stress out. Yeah, yeah. be over your head. Yeah. You saw that PK that was taken, like, I think last weekend where the dude stuttered and then barely kicked it over. Oh, my God. Was he, was he trying to do a panenka? Yeah, I don't know what, what he was that? trying, but he's a professional. And I see people do stuff like that. I'm like, man, they're getting paid thousands a week, and I'm just out here playing for free or paying to play. I could hit that PK. Yeah. Like, that's not ever going to happen to me, <laughs> you know? Like, come on, man. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I'll give rough. him some credit for at least hitting it, though. Like, I thought he was going to go down completely. He should have. Yeah, he he should have. He should have. He should have. He should have just faked an injury because he blew it. Yeah, at that point, I mean, it was he over. You should have. I would have said my yeah. knee blew out. You know, like told right. the coach like I fucked up, and then at least the fans think I'm hurt. You know, I'm not right. gonna go out like that. You know, he's gonna be a meme for life. I've never seen something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll ever see worse PK in your life. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know what was going through his mind. He definitely probably should. He probably should have smoked before he did that. He, that's he, a, he showed a close up of his face. It looked like he was. It was very like intense. Like he was clearly in his head. Yeah, well, I think he had like, was like, all right, you know, taking deciding where you're going to go is one thing, and then once you finally make up your mind, it's like, all right, cool. And then on the run up, you know, you got to you got to decide what type of run up you're going to do. And I think he went, he wanted to stop at the last second and go to that side where he wanted to go, but then he saw that the keeper went there at the same time and it threw everything off, him. and he was just <laughs> like frozen in time and was still momentum going forward, and he just kind of shuffled it to him like that was terrible. It's an all timer. That I mean, that clip's gonna be around for a long time. <laughs> Could you imagine that happening in the North End? Oh man! Oh man! Having a oh, friend of the God. North End. Oh my God! Well, speaking of being your head, our other host Travis, who couldn't be here for this interview, did want to submit a question. So this is his question. He he wants to know: Am I allowed in the Forty Two Originals? If one time I got a panic attack after eating weed and made Darren and his wife leave Dodger Stadium in the third inning because I thought I was having a stroke, please read verbatim. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, the thing is, you don't have to. You don't have to smoke to be in the north end. We don't want in, anything like that to happen. But if it does happen to you, we will take care of you. We are one hundred percent make sure that you are right. Nothing like that has ever happened in the north end to anybody around us. We're a family. You know, we've got we've got parents. We've got little kids around. You know, we try to set an example. We also want the kids to know that it's not the drug that they taught me in school about dare. You know, there are people out here that are productive and do do good things so as long as they see good role models and then they won't mind if we consume so when they come around at their age they won't be like oh that's the boogeyman type of thing like you know they'll know better yeah. or not they want to do it they've been around it you know like that's not for me you know i'll pick it up when i want to pick it up you know whatever the case may be but we're not gonna make you do anything you don't want to do we'll never try to peer pressure anybody or anything like that we we're there to make sure everyone gets into the match and has a great time and cheers the whole time. That's the main thing. You know, we don't want people, we say you can't be coming in there stoned. You got to be able to cheer. You know, that's yeah. weird. If you want to be stoned, get a seat, go sit down. Like, we don't have a problem with that. You can be a 42 and go sit down in seats. But if you're with us in the North End, you're going hard. And that's what we're trying to instill in everybody, no matter how high you get. So as long as you're, hey, so Travis, if you want to come hang out with us, take your edible, just make sure that you're going to be going hard. If you do pass out, it's going to be from going hard in the North End from jump from LA Football Club too many times. It won't be from the other one. Well, as one of the people taking care of him that night, I'll say that you're making a big commitment. 
So that's, that's, <laughs> uh, I've been, I've been there. I've been there. And I have no problem doing that. Well, you mentioned a little bit before, like I, I want to know more about like how you want to expand what you guys are doing here. It seems like you're growing a lot. So like what's next? Well, we are growing tremendously at a, at a tremendous pace, which is amazing, but there's no next. It's just continue what we're doing. I guess next would be become an official supporter group. See a, a 420 flag down there on the field. So maybe that's something that will happen in the future. But as far as like what's next and how we want to continue to grow, we do welcome anybody that wants to come. Like I said, you don't have to smoke. We're a family. You can just going to come and hang out with some really cool people from all different backgrounds, all walks of life, all over the earth. And you're going to meet some, you're just going to, you're going to love it. So we want to grow in that sense. If anybody out there that's not from an LAFC fan club or supporter group or support our club and just from the MLS in general, we are trying to get supporters in every club, not necessarily 42 original members, but just some people that are asking the same questions that we're asking of our front office in terms of advertisement revenue and how we can get these brands inside, especially if you're in a legal state. You don't got to be open and be proud about it like we are. We'd love for you to be. Shout out to the New York 420 club out there in New York. There's one in Minnesota. There's one over there in the New York Red Bulls. There's one in the USL with the Black Diamonds and... New Mexico, there's one in Austin with Tok Tok FC or whatever, not whatever, no disrespect to them. Sorry, it's just slipping my mind what their name is. But there's a lot and we are growing. So we just want to keep doing that, uh, making sure that we are knocking on the door. So when it goes federally legal across all states, we're not trying to sell cannabis. We're trying to make sure that there's type, some type of representation for people. You know, one thing that I did learn is that there's a lot of people that don't go to sporting events because they don't want to be around people that drink. And that's no disrespect to people that do drink. That's just that maybe there's people out there that came up with different backgrounds, you know, and were maybe abused or had some type of, you know, whatever the case may be, where they just can't be around alcohol. They do feel safe to be around us. And that's a blessing that I didn't see coming. I'm very proud to say that. And I want to continue to make sure that those people feel welcome and can come to games. If they're not necessarily just soccer supporters, you know, they're just people that want to go to professional sport, sporting events and feel comfortable that they're not going to have someone around that's too drunk or, you know, it's going to in any type of way trigger them. And that's what we pride ourselves on, that we're just a safe space. So everyone's welcome. That's great. Well, what, well, what are ways that people can find you and follow you and get in touch and, and be more involved? We're at every single tailgate. We're, Always one of the first, not maybe the, one of the first couple groups there. You'll find our tent. You can't miss it. it. Says 42 Originals on there. Best is to come in person. But if you want to do social media, we have the 42 Originals on Instagram. The same on Twitter. We're on Threads. We're on or X. Sorry, not Twitter. We are oh, on. Man, you're in trouble. TikTok. Yeah, no. Sorry, <laughs> Elon. Don't don't cancel our account. They already banned us once. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we're on pretty much every platform. If you can't find us, just come ask us in person. And somebody with a green scarf will definitely point you in the right direction if you don't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> and this might uh, be a great weekend for it. Cause yes. This is a good time to go. This is the one. Uh, you know, If you don't have 420 plans, hit us up. Um, we do have tickets sometimes, and we don't mind helping people out. If you've never been to a game, I always say this. If you've never heard me say it in person, you're hearing me say it now. If you've never been to a game, I don't mind paying for your first ticket. I'm not going to pay for a 1,000 oh tickets for the first game. Next game, but you know, I'll pay when when I can get a ticket for you. I'll make sure I get you your first ticket, and I try to do that as much as possible. And that's kind of how we've started to grow. So that's what it's all about, paying it forward. Because I've had a lot of stuff paid forward towards me through the club and through the community that I've jumped all in for. So it's the only thing I can do. At least I can do. That's an incredible offer. That's amazing. Well, I think Vince and I will both be there this weekend. We're excited. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're gonna stop by and say hello for sure. Swing by the tent, come get some ceviche, take a picture with us, you know, and for sure. enjoy your great. enjoy your uh, match day with a, a smile. It's gonna be a great day. And we're playing Red Bulls. They're they're one of the top teams in the league. So great yep. test yeah. coming after after last weekend. So it'll be fun. All right. You know? Well, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for joining us on the show. Yeah. Thank you guys for everything you do. Thank you. Specifically, Vince, I appreciate you. You know, no, no one can say enough for you, man. You've done a lot for the club and a lot for us, and you're really cool, man. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the club, especially our group. He's gonna, he's gonna make me cry. Yeah, <laughs> make me cry this episode. Yeah. Oh Thanks, man, dude. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to see you this weekend. Yes, yeah, always, always a pleasure, dude. Like yep, that. yep. Always, always love the stories. Darren, <laughs> I'll have to tell you his, co his Costa Rica story one time. You'll have to hear. It. It's, it's an epic tale. 
Oh my god. Um, okay. We have fun on I'm the win dates. All right, guys. <laughs> have a great have All a right. great week. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Everybody out there, Sounds have good. a great one. We'll see you on the weekend. All right. When Thank we you. come back, we're gonna make some bets. Ooh. And we're back. Now it's time for a segment called Bet It and Forget It. Bet It and Forget It. Forget it. Every week, we end the show with a bet for this week's game. We make an outlandish prediction, something that almost definitely will not happen, but could. Each week, Travis and I put up $5, and if no one hits, the money rolls over to the next week. Eventually, by the time someone's weird prediction comes true, they might win a good chunk of change. None of our bets cashed last week, as is custom. So, our bet pool for this week is now $90. Woo! That's that's rent in some places. That's like what my wife made on season three of Hacks. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I need some Patreon subscriber. <laughs> so, so Max doesn't pay very well. <laughs> <laughs> we love the people of Max. We think that they're great. Everything about Max streaming service is wonderful. Huh? That's not what people were saying. Uh, nope, uh, it's great. <laughs> we love. Yeah, like, Max. like nine months ago, there was like. I feel like a lot of people were saying not that. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, boys! It's the oh, best sorry. one. Okay, everyone, go around love and it. say, love "I Max. love Max." Right now, <laughs> but I, I love. I, I do they have Fallout? I love Max. Oh no, Fallout is on what Prime? I heard Fallout was good. Fallout is good. I've been, I've been watching. That, that It'd be a lot joke. better. It's a bad joke if but... it was on Max. Oh, it would <laughs> be, be much better results. if it was on Max. So I have a bet this week. Oh wait, did we go through what we did? What we bet last week? I don't remember. I remember. I had bum you... goal. I wanted somebody was going to score with their butt. Oh right, I wanted oh, two right. braces and I got only one brace. That's right. Yeah. I had mine was going to be a Hollings head. Header with the mustache celebration. Yeah. I have a, a bet this week that, that I'm very confident in. And it's actually probably the least confident I've ever been in a bet. But it's a little bit different. And I want you guys to tell me if it's allowed. Because the window for it to cash goes beyond game day. Okay? Oh, okay. So the the bet is this. I am going to New York City tomorrow morning. And the bet is that I will see over five people in Red Bull New York gear. I will see more than five people on the streets of New York City, and it has to be Red Bull New York. It can't be Red Bull, the the automobile Leipzig. group. It can't oh, okay. be Red Bull Leipzig. It, it can't be just plain Red Bull merch. It has to be specifically a kit, or if it's like on a hat, it has to say New York. I need, and it can't be like in a window display. It, like it's not an ad. I need to see five <laughs> people wearing merch for... Uh, the New York Red Bulls. Are they wow. Red Bull New York or the New York Red Bulls? Red Bull New York. I think they're, yeah, they're Red Bull New York. Yeah. That, I need to see at least five people. I don't think I'm going to do it. And it's going to be a fun test. And I'm there from Wednesday, early this week, Wednesday morning to, I come back Wednesday. So it'll be like Wednesday to Tuesday. So by the next time we wow. record a preview episode, I'll know if I've seen five people wearing Red Bull gear. Wow. I like that bet. Cause I, I don't, I, mean, I honestly, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Like I, the fact that I'm not sure is bad. Like for them, <laughs> not for, not for your bet. I'm just saying for, for their branding and for everything. And New York's it's a sports true. town. It's yeah. uh, the thing is yeah. I, there's a lot of good sports. Like the Knicks are the second seed. There's going to be a lot of Knicks gear. There's going to be some Yankees gear. Yeah. I, it's not yeah, for a, sure. You would have seen five, but everyone's deciding well, plus, to support the Knicks. Plus, didn't they finally, Sorry, no. didn't they formally like formally green light the uh, NYCFC? NYCFC is right about to be New York's team for sure. So like if anyone's wearing MLS gear in New York this week, it's going to be that. And their logo is so much better. It's the old New York city subway token. Like I, when I lived in New York and I saw them doing that, I was so excited about that. But I don't think my bet's going to cash, actually. But I'm excited to find out if it does. Same same guy that created LFC's logo, by the way. Oh, really? Uh, prolific. What else he do? Let me guess. Oakland Roots. Yes. Yeah, right? Oh! <laughs> Probably He's like the one who does all the good ones. Yeah, Bay FC. We talking Bay FC? Uh, I'm not sure if he did Bay FC. He did yeah. Vermont. Oh, uh, Vermont oh, Green is great. That's, that's good, yeah. Vermont. You know what I can tell you he didn't do? Fucking San Diego. What a dog shit ass of crest that. <laughs> he did not do San Diego. <laughs> Looks like a Beyblade. Okay, that's my uh, <laughs> that's my my bet. All right. My bet in it, it's kind of an easy one, but it's cool because it would be something like there's extras to it. Kai Kamara scores, and that <laughs> ties Landon Donovan's goal scoring oh, yeah. total. Yeah, I believe that would make him second, tied for second all time 
an MLS. And obviously super cool that he would do it at home in an LAFC shirt when Landon Donovan is known for being an LA Galaxy player. I'm into it. All right. Ilya Sanchez, goal and assist. I just got to say, me and Darren's bets, way more difficult than Vince. (laughs) (laughs) What? I mean, Ilya would say, like, he could do a goal and assist. Come on. Ilya, if you're listening, now's the time to turn it way up. Let's go. (laughs) All right, we'll see. Vince is trying to steal ninety dollars from us. Last the, time. <laughs> the the guy who's probably going to start might score a goal. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I don't think Ilya needs to turn it that far up to get to a goal and an assist. I'm not uh, worried about Ilya just listening. Decide to do it. <laughs> I think occasionally he sees his social. That media did come off like that. Like, oh no, yeah. I mean, maybe what if he is listening? <laughs> Every once in a while, he notices something we do on Instagram. That's the extent of him knowing we exist. Maybe he texts Vince every Which once in a while. Which is far more than I've ever dreamed of. <laughs> yeah. Well, we shall see. I am not going to be on the post game. Most likely, my mom oh. is going to be coming to New York to hang out with me. I haven't seen her since all the fun stuff with my family, so I will not be there this weekend. So. Please hold down the fort and be kind to Darren and Vince in my stead. I know I usually am their protector, but I won't <laughs> be there to do that today So or on Saturday. So please be kind. That's our show. Our theme music is done by the insane team of James Valentine, Nate Walcott, and Louis Palmer. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel where all of our episodes and clips are available in video form at youtube.com slash at happyfootsidefoot. You could review us on Apple Pods and Spotify, and you could follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Threads. Another thing... LAFC Luke was talking about using threads all the time. I'm like, should we go back to thread? I haven't been on threads in a long time. We got to figure it out. Should we do it? Are there tell, LAFC Darren, people tell me. on threads? Luke's there. Uh, yeah, there's people on threads. We could we we could go to threads, Every, yes. Every once in a while, I get that update on Instagram where it's like, 21 new people followed you on threads. I was like, but why? <laughs> I haven't done anything. <laughs> oh, no, I, 20, 20 disappointed people. I, I still have the instinct, and I still scroll Twitter, and it just makes me angry constantly. And I'm just seeing things that make me mad. And I'm like, why am I doing this? I could be on threads. But then I'm like, it kind of feels good to be mad. Uh, and if you made it this far into the episode, <laughs> and chances are you are enjoying the show. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's true... <laughs> If that's true and you want to show your support, please consider becoming. I don't know if this episode earned their support. <laughs> please be consider becoming a friend of the foot at five dollars a month at patreoncom happyfootsadfit or pick up some of our brand new Hapo Sapo inspired merch. Those scarves are going fast, guys. If you are a Patreon subscriber and you want a new scarf, let me tell you, we're down. We've we've sold almost half. So get in there if you want them or. Be sorry. You can also, oh, you get the merch by going to happyfootsafferpod.com. That's the important part of this. Any support really goes a long way to keeping the show going and the community growing. Thanks again. And Darren and Vince, we'll see you at BMO, baby. We will. We'll be there. I love you. I will be. We'll see you at BMO. Go see each other. Go up to the, uh, go up to them at the, the <laughs> thing. What's it called? The thing beforehand? The, the tailgate? tailgate? Uh, Just and whisper in Vince's ears. I love you. Bye. And then yes. fucking stab him in the back. <laughs> Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> what a roller coaster. Guys, I haven't been on my antidepressants, can you tell? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Bye. I love you. Bye. Vince. Your Vince. cold dead heart. <laughs> don't stab Vince. If anyone sees Vince, don't stab him. <laughs> <laughs>